afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the American Dairy Association Northeast live virtual farm tour. We are so excited to have you here with us today. We will be visiting Talview Dairy in Pennsylvania. So a few things before we get started. We wanna remind you that we want to answer your questions. We ask that if you're logged in on Zoom, please use the question and answer feature at the bottom of your screen to type your questions. Or if you're watching via Facebook Live, you can comment on this Facebook Live. And then if you're watching via YouTube, we just ask that you enjoy the tour. So with all of that, a reminder, we will try to answer every single question we get. But there are sometimes a lot of questions, so be sure to be listening. Your question might be answered or someone else may ask it before you do. Make sure we're paying attention. So without further ado, let's take a trip to Lebanon, Pennsylvania to go find Farmer Stacy. So what you're seeing now is an overhead view of the farm. Stacy's here right now with us. We just have to go find her. Stacy, we found you. We are all set. Let's go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. I am so glad that you are with us here today at our farm. And just like they introduced, we are in London, Pennsylvania. So welcome to PA. And just to give you a little idea of where that is close to, some of you may be heard of Hershey, Pennsylvania, where chocolate is made. So we live about 15 minutes away from Hershey. But here we are. We're at my all-time favorite place on the farm. We're with the baby calves. So right now you can see some of them are in their hutches, just kind of resting and chilling out. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our calves. First of all, we have on our farm black and white Holsteins, and we also have some red and white Holsteins. When they are first born, we keep the young ladies on the farm because they are the future of our farm. They will become moms where they will produce milk. So a girl calf is called a heifer. Can you say that with me? Heifer. So this is a girl calf. So we keep the girl calves here. And when they are first born, it is so important that we give them a great start to their life. We give them a lot of good nutrients. And the first thing that we give them is their mom's milk in this bottle. This is the size bottle that a newborn baby calf will have. And the very first milk, I'm gonna give you another word for today. The very first milk that the mom provides for its baby calf is, is called colostrum. Say that word with me too, colostrum. This is the first milk that is filled with so many nutrients and antibodies for the baby calf to get a great start to its life. So not only is nutrition really important, they start out with milk, which is called do you remember what it's called? It's called colostrum. If that's, if that's what you were thinking, you're right. And later on, they have water and grain that is provided for them as well. Not only is their food really important, it's important that they have a nice, warm, safe environment and a clean environment. So if you look in our calf hutches, we have bedding in there and the bedding is made up of straw that's the yellow stuff straw and then we also have some shading so that just helps to keep it nice and dry and comfortable comfortable for the calves to lie down in the one other thing i want you to think about if you look at these baby calves that are with me here in this area they are new babies they only have been alive for a few days to a few weeks. So the one thing I want you to think about 
all of you were a baby at one point in time. This is my oldest son, Ethan, when he was first born. He weighed seven pounds and 12 ounces when he was born. So I want you to think in your mind, do you remember how much you weighed when you were born? A lot of human babies weigh around seven to eight pounds. Some of you maybe even weighed less than that, five or six pounds. So that's a human baby. But I want you to think about a calf. A calf, when she is first born, weighs 80 to 100 pounds. So that's probably the weight that some of you are now as you are getting older. So they're a lot larger than what we were when we were babies. The one other thing that's really interesting is when we were young, our moms had to hold us. We then began to crawl and maybe by our first birthday, we were able to walk. But these young ladies, they are able to walk in the first few hours of their life. That is one of the most exciting things. Soon after they are born, you can see them stand up on their wobbly little legs and they're able to walk. So those are some differences with calves versus us, but it's still so important just like for us, we needed a healthy home and environment to grow and to get big and strong. So as a farmer, that's my job and my family's job to make sure that they're growing up, that they get the things that they need to grow up strong and healthy. So we do that, like I said, with the milk. We then add grain into their diet in a few weeks. And I know, I forgot one thing, I'm getting ahead of myself. After they have milk from the bottle, this is something that we have on our farm. This is known as the milk taxi. And what this is, it is something that pasteurizes. I'm gonna give you another big word. It goes through pasteurization. So there is milk in here. It gets heated up to about 146 degrees for about 30 minutes. When it gets heated up, it will kill any germs or bacteria that could possibly be in it and then it cools it back down. And we actually feed this to the calves when it is about 105 degrees. So right now, I can't show you that because right now it is only cooled to 140. So they would burn their mouth if I tried to feed it to them. But I'm just gonna show you, I take this little spigot off and I push a button and put this in their bucket and milk will come right out into their bucket. So just like, Young babies like you and me, when we were young, we started with a bottle or maybe we nursed from our mom and then we learned to drink out of a sippy cup. Well, we try to graduate that they can drink out of a bucket later in their life as well. So as you can see, there's some similarities, but there's a lot of differences between humans and baby calves. But the most important is they need care and they need a good place to grow up just like you and me. That is so cool, Stacy. We have a couple questions here that I would love to ask you. We have a lot of questions asking, why do your calves have earrings or ear tags in? Okay, very good. They do have earrings or little tags with the number. That is so that we can identify them here on the farm as soon as they are born the first few days. We give them a number and we're able to follow them throughout their life here on the farm. So we know when we give them um, their vaccines, their immunizations, we know when we give them medicine or they're sick. So it's just a great way for us to keep track of them. Just like when you go to the doctor, they have a record sheet where they're writing down things about you. So that is how we keep track of their life and what they are receiving here on the farm. That is amazing, Stacy. Thank you for sharing. Another question we asked, as you explained to us that these are all girl calves, we had a question of where do the boy cows or boy calves go? Our boys, because they are bulls, that's another name for you, a bull, they get taken to another farm where another farm raises the bulls. So they are leaving our farm. We just keep the girls. Thank you for clarifying that. Now we had another question of 
how big is your farm and how long has the farm been around? Okay. Well, our farm here where you saw the aerial view come in, we have about 90 acres here. And then we do rent a farm down the road where we also farm to be able to have enough fields and crops for all of our cows. Because I didn't tell you that, and we'll see that in the free sale barn, we milk about 250 cows. So we need some good land to be able to support the cows, to be able to grow crops for them. So on this farm, we have about 90 acres. And this farm has been around, I actually grew up on this farm and we milked cows growing up. And then my family, we have been here now for the past five years. Wow, very cool, Stacey. And then I was also, another question we have in here is how many calves do you have in a day? Oh, well, it definitely varies on when the moms are due. We can have, I would say, probably the most that we've had in a day are maybe four or five, but it's usually around, and not even one a day, like it's one every few days that we have. So um, sometimes we do have like a big baby boom, and then other times it's not very active with baby calves. So it all depends on when the mom cows are ready to have their babies. Oh, fantastic. Very cool. Okay. Another question that we have had about your very adorable calves is how much milk they will drink in a day. That is a great question. We feed them two times a day. So we feed them in the morning and then we also feed them in the afternoon. And that's one thing that's so great. Well, this is, first of all, the bottle. So this is the size bottle that they will drink. And the one thing, math is really important. Um, all of this is kind of in liters. So if you look at this, this is about 1500 milliliters that they get for a bottle. And I will tell you, this milk taxi then, when we push the button, they get about 3.1 liters. So they get I would say when we fill the bucket, it's about half to three quarters full. So they get that two times a day. Then they always have water and they always have grain available to them as well. Wow, very cool, Stacy. Now we did have somebody ask us as well if you regularly let people visit the farm. And I know it's a little bit different times right now, but maybe you wanna share with us about that. It is. We have had a lot of live tours here before, which is wonderful. I love when people can come because right now, even though you're here with me on the farm, you can't smell and you can't touch the different things. So that I definitely love to have live tours here. Um, but yes, right now, schools and that, they are just doing a lot of virtual things. But I am really excited for when we will be able to entertain um, individuals to come for live tours again. Because the one thing that I always kind of do, and none of these calves are out right now, but they love to suck. And so if you go over to a calf and you stick your hand out, many times they will come over and they'll sniff at you. They're very curious and they love to suck on your fingers and lick. And you can't get hurt because the interesting thing about a calf is they don't have any top teeth. They just have teeth on the bottom. So it's not like they can clamp down on your hand to bite you but their tongue is kind of rough like sandpaper and it's wet of course oh very cool so the last question we have before we head off to our next stop is we have some questions about why the calves aren't with their moms can you kind of explain to us why these girls get their own private housing yes and I'm so glad that that was Asked because I did forget to say that that is something really important. Just like when we were first born, our immune system was really low. And that's why we needed colostrum and we needed to get our different vaccines and everything and immunizations. So that is why we keep our calves 
by themselves. So they're not sharing germs. Just even as we've gone through the year of COVID, we've had social distancing and we've had people saying so that we're not sharing germs. So we are trying to make sure that they are getting a great start to their beginning of their life so that they're not getting sick with being with other people or with other animals, excuse me. So they are in their own hutch for about the first two months of their life. And then after they've developed their immune system and they've gotten the things that they need in order to get a great healthy start, they do get to have group living where they get to go in a pen with other calves their age. So it's kind of like our toddler room, I would compare it to. So that is a very good question. And the one thing of why we take them away from their mom is so that we can definitely watch them and observe them and make sure that they're getting the care they need. Um, a cow, she could easily step on her baby and a big cow that we're gonna see very soon could do a lot of damage. So it is really important that we take that calf away to give them a safe environment where we can watch them and observe them and give them what they need. Because sometimes the mom, she might not let her young drink from them. So we're making sure that they get all the things, the milk and all the care that they need in their beginning of their life. Amazing. I love that. Thank you for clarifying, Stacey. And I think it's about time for us to head off to our next stop. Okay, now we're gonna get to see the big girls. Amazing, so, and Stacey, I'll add a couple questions in here that we have had. Okay. So one question that we have had is how long do cows live? Well, cows on average, I would say we have cows for about six years. So their lifespan is a little different than ours. Probably our oldest one, I had just asked my husband, I think our oldest one might be a nine-year-old, but I would say on average, it's about six years. Ah, very cool. Very, very cool. So another question that we had before we start talking about the cows is how many employees work on the farm? Okay. Well, especially with our farm, we are very blessed to have some amazing employees that help us to take care of our animals and to do the daily chores here on the farm. So we have two full-time um, individuals, and then we also have three part-time. And it's also my family. There's five of us. So it's my husband and myself, and we have three kiddos that also help out. So it definitely takes a a big team to work together to take care of the animals, to give them what they need. Amazing. Now, oh my gosh, what are you standing next to? A big pile of cow feed? Yes, here we are. So we started with the babies. And remember, I said they weighed about 80 to 100 pounds when they were born. Here we are with the big cows. These are the girls that have had babies. So I'm not sure if I said that already, but in order for a cow to produce milk, she needs to have a baby. So that is a very important thing. That's why it's so important that they have their babies to produce milk. But the one thing that we can see, these cows are a lot bigger. They weigh about 1,500 pounds. And these, like I said, this is perfect. We have a red and white Holstein and we have a black and white Holstein. So we have Holstein cows on our farm. Just like we wanted to give really good care to our calves, we are doing the same thing in here with our freestyle barn. This is called a freestyle barn. The cows are able to move freely throughout the barn. They have feed in front of them 24 seven, they have fresh, clean water available. And there are other things too that are available. They have stalls that they're able to go and lie down in and rest. We have a brush that if the cow walks by, they get a little back scratch, a little back rub that they love to walk up to. Um, so there's a lot of different features in our barn. They love to be in here because it is temperature controlled. So on a really cold, chilly day, there are curtains, not like 
material curtain, but another type of material in the barn that will go down on the ends of the barn. So it keeps the heat inside. But on a cool day, we have fans that start going. So those are available to the cows to make sure there is good circulation and ventilation here in the barn. And the other thing on really hot summer days, I know I like to, and my family, we like to go swimming in a swimming pool or to run through a sprinkler. Our cows on really hot days have a sprinkler system that will spray them with water that they get cooled off. So as you can see, they have a lot of different things in this barn that keep them very happy and comfortable. So the one other thing with the freestyle barn, we have clean shavings on them as well, that that gets changed about three times each week so that they have a nice bed to lie down on. Um, and I know I talked about the water, but let's talk about the feed now that you can kind of think about what they eat. This pile of feed is about the amount that a cow will eat in one day. And we say they eat about 100 to 120 pounds of feed. This feed is called TMR. So those three letters stand for total mixed ration. And what that is, there are a lot of different ingredients that get mixed together in a big mixer on the farm that gets blended together to look like this. So some of those materials, we have a vitamin, a mineral concentrate for the cows. So that is one ingredient that gets mixed in. We also have some ground corn that is kind of ground up and really soft to touch. So that is a corn. We also have corn silage. So that takes the leafy stalk of a corn plant from the field. You can see some of the corn kernels in there with it. So that is corn silage. And our last ingredient is rye. And rye is a type of forage or another word, it's kind of like a green grass that is grown on the farm. So just like on your dinner plate, you might have chicken, mashed potatoes, peas. I know some of my picky eaters in my family, my kids would push the peas to the side and they'd be like, I'm not eating that. So the one thing that we do, we take those four ingredients, mix it all together. And this is what we get, that it's the peas are hidden in there. So they're getting all the nutrients that they need. So I know I said they eat about 100 to 120 pounds and they drink a lot of water they drink about a bathtub full of water every day. That's about 25 to 50 gallons of water. So these big animals, they have a big appetite. And that's why it's so important that they have food and water available all day long. Wow, Stacy, that was some awesome information. We have some questions here. One of the many questions that has been asked multiple times is how much do those girls weigh? Okay, well, the breed of cow that we have, they are Holstein. So they are a bigger frame cow compared to some other um, breeds, like a Jersey cow. Um, these cows weigh about, listen to this number and think about how big this is. 1,500, and some of them might be more like 1,800. So they are big animals with a really big appetite, but that's important because they produce delicious, nutritious milk for us. That is pretty darn cool, Stacy. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. Now, another question that we've had come through is, I know we talked about the ear tags earlier, but someone asked, do the cows have manes? That is a great question. The majority of our cows on our farm have just the ear tag. 
However, we do have some um, registered cows, and those are cows that do have a specific name. And I will tell you, my family, my children participate in a program known as 4-H. And so we go to our local county fair, and they get to show their animals. So we take they have to be a registered animal in order to do that. So they have a specific name. Like for example, one of my kids, their 4-H animal, her name is Pink. Another one is called Pepperoni. So there's different names that they have. So yes, but the majority of ours, we identify them with their ear tag. And I'm so glad you said that. I'm gonna just interject real quickly, Kelsey. Not only do they have ear tag, especially when they become milking cows, they have a band on their back leg. And you'll get to see this a little bit closer when we go to the milking parlor. But I'd like to compare that to a Fitbit. It allows us as farmers to know their activity. So we know if they're getting up to eat and drink. We know if they're taking time to rest. So it is their Fitbit that allows us to see their activity. and. It's gonna have another job when we go into the parlor that I'll talk a little bit more about. So that is another way that we keep track of our cows and are able to identify them. That is so cool, Stacy. Yes, I know this tour is flying by. It is about time we head over to our next stop, which is the parlor. Okay. So we have a couple other questions that have come up since then. One of the question was the barn that we were just in, how many cows are in that barn? Well, we milk about 250. So that's about how many cows are in that freestall barn. Okay, that's awesome. Now I have a couple of cool questions here. One is how you shared with us and remind us because this has come up again. How old is your oldest cow on the farm? Our oldest cow is about nine years old. Very cool. Now, Stacy, I don't know if you know this, but I had a question. How fast can a cow run? Oh, my. That's a that's an interesting question. I never really clocked a cow with how fast they can run. <laughs> I mean, when they're out in open space, because there are times on the farm that cows do get out because they're curious and nosy. And especially sometimes we as humans, we forget to like close the chain on a gate or something. Um, but I really don't even know the, I would say maybe five to seven miles per hour maybe is how quick they would be able to move. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. So come on in. Wow. So very this is cool. the milking parlor. So our parlor, you would say that this is a parallel parlor. I have my friend Lexi in here who is milking right now. Um, and like I said earlier over in the freestyle barn, they have a band on their leg. So this band, when they walk in, it gets read by this little sensor that their number comes up, that we're able to see who it is. And this also tells us how much milk they give at every milking. So it's a great way for us to monitor. Like if she doesn't give very much milk, we might think, hmm, maybe she's not feeling well today. And we can go and check out what is going on with a certain cow. So that is a great thing that we have access to. So we're just gonna kind of move down here a little bit. This side is ready to go out. Um, we're kind of at a stage where we're not ready to do the, I'm going to show you at the end. This is a special solution that we use on the cows. It's our post dip. And we go up onto the cow's teats. That's what these four little fingers are called, a teat. And we dip them. And this solution will help to keep their teats nice and clean that they won't get any germs or bacteria when they go back over to their stall in the freestyle barn. So I'm just gonna kind of dip these girls, help Lexi out a little bit. Very cool. 
So Stacy, is that dip kind of like our hand sanitizer a little yes. bit? I would say it is, yes. So it's so important that they stay nice and clean and sanitized when they go out. Because we know out there, you probably saw some cow manure or poop. So it is really important that we keep them clean. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna push this little button. Actually, let's come to the front here. You can get a better view of what the, of what the gate will do. I'm gonna push this button. And the button is going to allow the front gate to go up and you're going to see all the cows will be able to leave to walk back out to their freestyle barn. Wow, very cool. So this is very kind of the cool. end of the process. I'll show you when we have this new bunch of cows come in. I will show you what we do at the beginning of their time. So the gate's going to come back down. I'm going to push this button that we have another gate open for the cows to come in. That's amazing. Okay. Now, now, Stacey, we've had a question here of how much milk does each cow make each day? Oh, yes. And I have a visual that I will show oh, that okay. will definitely she's just being nosy I think they know that there's a camera around let me just quickly I will come back to that question is that okay that is totally okay thank you okay I am just going to show you real quick the beginning stage of what we do here when they first come in so just like I did a post dip this foamer is a pre-dip and I'm going to take that once again, I'm going to go on the cows for, do you remember the word? They're called teats. So I would go through and dip each cow. And for time, I'm just going to stop there. Lexi's going to continue. In order to allow this to clean and do its job, just like Kelsey compared it to our hand sanitizer, just like when we wash our hands, don't we need to sign the ABCs when we wash our hands? We need to do it for a certain amount of time. So this solution needs to stay on the teats for a certain amount of time so that it does its job. So after about 15 to 20 seconds, I then come in with a clean cloth. Each cow gets cleaned with its own cloth. I'm going to go in and I'm gonna clean that solution off. So if you look real close there, you can see those four teats are getting really clean. And I sometimes even go in the middle here, if there's any extra shavings or other things. I'm just gonna show you, starting at the top of the teat and working down, I'm gonna just pull at her teat and I see some beautiful white, nutritious milk coming out. So that kind of helps to activate that she's going to let her milk down. Now I'm going to push the button. This milker now has suction. You can probably hear it. And if you put your finger, you can feel like a pulse on your finger. So it does not hurt the cows at all. It is very comfortable for them. So I am going to put, oh, you see, she's ready to give her milk. So I hang the milker and put it on and you can see that white, delicious, nutritious milk flowing through. Now you asked about how much milk a cow gives every day. So we're just gonna go over here real quick and I'm gonna tell you many times on the farm here, it's given in weight. So we might say that they give about 80 to 90 pounds. Right now, our cows are producing fairly well, and they're producing about 90 pounds a day. But to help you understand, because we get gallons in the store, this is the number that we get from a cow every single day. We get 10 of them. So count them with me. Let's look at this. It's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten gallons of milk every single day. So it is amazing with how much milk they can produce. But that's because they eat and drink a lot and they're big animals. So they can produce a lot of milk for us. Wow, Stacey, that is so cool. Now, I have a couple questions. We did have a question of how many cows can you milk at one time in your parlor? Okay. Our parlor, like I said, is called a parallel parlor. So there's another math term for you. They stand in parallel from each other. And we have a parlor that there are 12 on each side. So that is 12 plus 12 gives us 24. We can milk 24 cows in here at one time. The other thing I know I did not share is many farmers milk their cows. They get milked at least two times a day. Here at our farm on Talview Dairy, we milk three times every day. So our cows get milked at five in the morning, one in the afternoon, which you are getting to experience. And then many times when we go to bed, these girls are getting milked yet again at nine o'clock at night. So wow. three times on our farm. Now, Stacy, I think you said it. It only takes about five to 10 minutes for each cow to give all her milk each time she comes to the parlor, right? Yes, that is correct. It so seems it's like not a very long. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It seems like she doesn't have to go to work for very long during the day then. No, she does not. She is only in the parlor for about, like you said, 15 to 30 minutes for an entire day. And the majority of her time is spent over in the freestyle barn where she can eat chill out and just do what she wants to do over there in her area. So they have a lot of free time. Wow. So Stacy, we did have a great question. If you have to milk the cows three times a day, how do you go on vacation? Well, it all goes back to, we have some awesome employees like my friend Lexi back here and some other people we have employees that we as a family are able to go and get away. So that is so important. Even though we love to be here on the farm, it is really important for us to be able to go away and enjoy family time. So we are very fortunate that we can do that because of the great help that we have. That is awesome. Now, Stacey, I'll ask another question. We've had some folks ask, what does your milk go to produce for dairy products primarily? Our milk stays fluid. So that means our milk goes to a processing plant where it will go through a lot of different tests and steps, but it will be sold as milk that you drink. So ours is just a fluid milk. So when you buy a gallon of milk, that is the type of product that we have from our farm. That is really cool. So I would imagine people around this area might have already enjoyed milk from your farm. Yes, they may have probably. The one thing, especially if you're from Pennsylvania, if you want to know that your milk comes from local Pennsylvania, you have to look at the top of the gallon jug and you'll see the number 42. 42 means that it comes from a Pennsylvania processing plant. That is absolutely awesome, Stacy. So I'm just looking through all of these wonderful questions that you guys have been asking us. So we have a couple more, Stacy. You feel like you're up for a couple more? Of course. Fantastic. Thank you all for sticking with us. So we wanted, we have a few people here who wanted to know how many babies a cow will have in her lifetime with you. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Because you know it's so important that they have babies in order to continue to produce milk. So 
the cows, they have about three babies during their lifetime. So that's about one baby every year. And as we talk about that, <coughs> excuse me, I can tell I've been talking for a while. Um, they have their first baby when they're about two years old. That is great to know as well. Now we have a question for you, Stacy, specifically. Do you have a favorite cow or calf on the farm? Uh, you know what? It's kind of like your teacher. You shouldn't have favorites, but I will tell you some of the kids 4-H show animals are definitely my favorite. Just because we spend a lot of time with them, we give them some extra care. Like for example, we um, give them a special bath and we brush them to get them ready for the show ring. So I would say my favorite cow on our farm is our very first 4-H animal that we had. And her name is Pink. Well, that is pretty darn cool, Stacy. I know we've had lots of other fantastic questions coming in. Most of them you have already answered, which is so fabulous. And I don't want to keep our classrooms too far beyond our allotted time. So with that, Stacy, is there anything else you want to share with us? Yes. My last thing that I just want to share is I hope that you, first of all, enjoyed the tour. I hope you learned something. And most importantly, I really hope that you see that your milk comes from a good place. So that is so important that you know that farmers, we take great care of our animals and we want to be able to produce a wonderful treat for all of you that you can buy at the store. Fantastic, Stacey. I think it was pretty obvious from everything that you showed us behind the scenes today that you guys take great care of your cows. And we are so excited to go out and enjoy some of those delicious dairy products. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today for this virtual farm tour. Now, remember, Thanks for coming. Oh, if you guys want to, too, this tour was recorded meaning you can watch it right away again on Facebook Live or on our YouTube page, either one. You can watch the whole thing again in case you missed it or have another question that might have been answered. We really appreciate this and we hope you all have a great rest of your school year. Thanks everybody.